Next question says, a binding price ceiling creates a, a shortage and leads to non-price rationing. B, surplus and leads to non-price rationing. C, surplus and increases revenue for the government. And D, shortage and so quantity supplied will increase in the long run. So for the best way to think about price ceilings and price floors, in my opinion, is just to draw one out either in our head or um, uh, referring to it uh, online. Uh, sorry, not online. Uh, referring to it on an actual uh, graph. Um, let's see if I can connect this. Okay, I think my pen is dead. Uh, I'll just use the mouse. So um, first thing we're doing here is we're drawing our graph. We have demand, we have supply, and uh, we have our binding price ceiling. So price ceiling is a, bear, is, a, is a price set by the government in which uh, they say that the price can be no higher than this uh, level. And uh, binding means that it is a price ceiling that actually does something, which means it has to be set below the equilibrium price, right? So we see here that this is the equilibrium price, right? We're right. P star. And the next thing we're going to write uh, is a binding price ceiling, so a ceiling anywhere lower than P star, right? So let's say P1. And so what we have here is we have uh, a surplus, right? Demand is too high. Uh, and, you know, this is quantity demanded right here, and this is quantity supplied right here. And so we know that demand is too high, and uh, that is creating what we know as a shortage, right? There is uh, not enough supply of whatever this good is yeah, to fulfill the quantity demanded at this price level. And so the effect of this is going to be something along the lines of non-price rationing. So non-price rationing is best understood of as something like um, queuing, where people are kind of getting in line to uh, you know, buy a certain product, um, they are, um, you know, first uh, products are being sold not on a, on a who wants it basis, but on a first come first serve basis. And so all these things um, are, are results of a, of a shortage in a certain market um, that we're talking about here, right? And so um, that's what we're dealing with on, on the price side. Um, so that's going to give us the answer choice A. A binding price ceiling creates a shortage and leads to non-price rationing. And uh, we can take a look at the answer that the previous two uh, said. They said the correct answer is A, a binding price ceiling is set at a price below the equilibrium price, has the effect of creating a shortage since suppliers may be unwilling to supply the same quantity as with the equilibrium price. This is because they will receive less than the equilibrium price. Answer B is incorrect because that is the opposite effect of a binding price ceiling. So I think it, this question almost accurately, this accurately describes the uh, effect. Um, they describe the effect of creating a shortage on suppliers, but it is kind of an interaction of price with both supply and demand. So I think that's one thing we're going to correct. So we're going to say a binding price ceiling creates a shortage because it limits the price to a level below the equilibrium. A lower price means that suppliers are willing to supply less quantity uh, and the uh, consumers are going to demand higher quantities. This shift from equilibrium best seen on a graph is going to result in a gap between quantity demanded and quantity supplied that is equal to a shortage. Great. And so otherwise, the solution is correct. We find no problem with that, and we're going to move on to the...